Okay, I'll just give the legates a few more seconds to join. All right, so it's seven o'clock under that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you can see me on the screen. Okay, I think I'll start now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kalki Sipuru and I am the Ohasa Gauteng Chairperson. And I'd like to welcome you to tonight's webinar with the uh, Sada and Ohasa Fresh Breath Day. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good to be back on the webinars and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Ms. Lona Khobana, um, who will be uh, giving a topic today uh, on, the, on, her, on her topic. Um, I'd just like to uh, give a few announcements before we start. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please re refrain from using the raised hand, but type your comments and questions in the Q&A tab. CPD certificates will be loaded to the startup platform and you'll be able to access all your certificates under your member profile. If you do not have a startup profile, you'll be able to create one for yourself and access your CPD points there and your certificates. The event for tonight qualifies for one clinical CEU, and we are streaming live on YouTube. So in case you have difficulty um, accessing this platform, the Zoom platform, you can um, log on to YouTube. And um, I've also got an announcement regarding upcoming webinars. SADA Dental and Oral Health Virtual Congress will run from the 27th to the 29th of August, 2021. The theme for this year is Back to Basics, Excellence in Dentistry, and registration lines open on the 1st of July. You can register on the Congress website on www.sardacongress.co.za. And please note that, that no weekly webinars will take place uh, between the 6th of August and the 6th of September. We encourage all members to register for the SADA Congress um, at the end of July. And please remember that the oral hygiene program will run on the Sunday and refer to your emails for further details. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and welcome our speaker, but let's start with her bio for today. All right, so Dona Khrubla studied oral hygiene at the University of Stellenbosch and qualified in 1999. She completed an expanded function course in oral hygiene at the University of Pretoria in 2001. She qualifies, qualified as EMS guided biofilm therapy trainer through the Swiss Dental Academy in 2016, working as an independent oral hygienist at Institute Tiger Valley since 2014, or 2004 actually, and specializing in teeth whitening, periodontal maintenance, and orthodontics. She's acting as oral health advisor for Ivadin since two, 2012, um, and she, she's promoting oral health through radio, magazine, articles, and social media introducing new technology through lectures and hands-on SCA GVT courses nationally. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome Dona Grobla. Hi, hello. Thank you. It's um, so nice to be here. And yeah, I agree with you. It's so nice to do these webinars again. Um, really miss those. And I, I, I kind of miss the the courses and getting back together. So this is unfortunately now the new way that we'll have to do it for quite a while. Um, I think I'm gonna start sharing my screen with you.
There we go. So I would like to talk to you today about my topic is a breath of fresh airflow. Um, as you know, and heard now, I qualified in 99 and I have always been very proud of my work and very passionate um, about what I do. But airflow came into my life a few years ago and it's really changed the way that I think about prophylaxis and that the way that I perform it today. And I really want to introduce you to it today. Um, some of you might already been using it. And then we'll talk about maybe a few new powders on the market um, and how you can maybe change the way that you're working now a little bit. So quickly, just what we will discuss today. Um, what are you talking about there now? So we'll quickly go through airflow. And then I very often get um, the comment, but I don't like it. I've tried it. And I was one of those where I used it on some of myself. Oh, my word, this is just not going to work. So we'll go through that point as well. And then why we don't like biofilm, the traditional way is all, not always the best way. And we'll talk about the better way of doing this and then your options for the future maybe. So what is airflow? So airflow therapy is a predictable and safe procedure, very important, very safe. You use powder, to, uh, and water and air pressure to remove biofilm, stains, and even young calculus from teeth. Implants, restorations, and orthodont orthodontic appliances. You can use this to remove um, biofilm, supra, and subgingivalli. So airflow therapy is a predictable and safe procedure we use water, powder, and air pressure to remove biofilm stains and calculus from teeth implants, restorations, orthodontic appliances, supra, and subgingivalli. Very important is that airflow therapy and air polishing, it's more or less the same thing, is not air abrasion. We very often get questions like, oh no, it's not safe. Air polishing and airflow therapy is not air abrasion, two completely different things. Your air abrasion is uh, a lot more abrasive. Um, you will use that maybe to clean fissures out before fissure sealant, so you can even remove caries with it or to clean a crown with it. So it's a, a lot more abrasive than our airflow therapy and our airflow polishing. So I've got a question to ask, and I think we've got a poll prepared. Um, and that is, do you use airflow or air polishing in your practice today? So um, can you guys start voting maybe on your side if you've got that prepared? Okay, I think let's start moving on. I'll get back to that because I would like to know um, how many of the audience is actually using the airflow or air polishing at this stage, but we'll get back to that one. So very often I hear, oh no, I don't like air polishing. It's so messy. My patients walk out of the surgery and they literally look like ghosts. They're full of powder. I'm full of powder. The surgery is full of powder. I really don't like using it. So we'll, we'll address that. I feel it's not safe to use on restorations and dental work. Um, and that's where I said that the, it's not the same as air abrasion. I think that's where a little bit of confusion comes in. And it's not comfortable for my patients or for myself. Um, some of the previous methods I used, um, I could actually feel the little powder, powder particles when it, it hit me. It was sore, so that's very uncomfortable for the patients as well. Um, and then when you're done with the, uh, the air polishing, the teeth is not smooth. So a lot of clinicians say, I anyway need to use the polishing paste or the polishing cup afterwards to get the teeth to be really nice and smooth. So why do I then need to use the air polishing first? And I'm 
tired, we're struggling with clogging. Clogging with a lot of these devices is a big problem, so we'll address that today as well. So here's a short little video, just giving you basically an idea of what air flow or air um, polishing is. So we make use of the handpiece. You'll see it's a non-contact procedure. And that um, you have to keep on moving the handpiece that we'll also discuss. We use water and air pressure and the powder, like we said, to remove our biofilm. And you'll be able to see how nicely the stains actually come off the teeth. On this video, the technique is not 100%, but we'll go through those little tips and tricks as well. They hold the handpiece very close to the tooth. Uh, we normally recommend a little bit of a further distance at that, but we'll discuss all of that as well. So why don't we like biofilm? So all oral disease, our caries, gingivitis, perio, our implant disease, these are all caused by biofilm or our plaque. And I want to really put the focus here on the biofilm. We are so focusing on calculus and removing all the calculus, but we sometimes forget that how absolutely critical it is to remove biofilm and all the biofilm. But not only our oral disease, but our systemic disease. You know how many research is being done lately on all the different links between periodontal disease and systemic disease. So it's not only for oral health, but for your patient's overall health. It's extremely important. So if we look at the ways that we've been dealing with biofilm so far, and this is the way that most of us were trained, is we start off with the ultrasonic scalar, either a piezon or a magnetostrictive scalar. Then we follow up with hand instrumentation and then our polishing cup or brush with our polishing paste. This is the most, like, I like to call the traditional way of doing prophylaxis. But these independent research institutions has done a research. And look what they found. This was interesting, but shocking at the same time to me. So one of them said that only 50% of biofilm is removed in critical areas, only 15%. So those areas we're talking about, fissures, subgingivally, interproximally, um, around orthodontic appliances and so on. This is really very shocking to me. And then it, the results of what we've been doing so long is actually unclear and not even proven. So it seems like what we're doing now is not really working. So routine scale and polishing in the traditional way makes little, little or no difference to gingivitis, probing death, or oral health related quality of life. This to me was really very, very worrying because you know, this is the way that um, most of us work and the only way that we really know. So those inaccessible areas is around our orthodontic appliances, subgingivity, as I said, interproximal occlusal surfaces in those fissures and then around implants. If you go and have a close look at enamel, you'll see on the left-hand side is enamel before cleaning with our biofilm residue on it. And very upsetting actually, right in the middle is after polishing with a low abrasive paste. I want you to have a close look at all the scratches on the enamel. Not, with, not talking anyone about dentine or cementum, we're talking about enamel. So that is what we left with after polishing a scratched surface with biofilm that's actually been moved around and pushed into the little indents in the teeth. And then on the right-hand side, you've got an enamel surface that's been cleaned by airflow or 
our air polishing procedure. You can see how nice and clean that surface is, but no, no damage been caused. So Axelson and Linden is two very well known dentists that does a lot of research when it comes to preventative dentistry. And they took 257 patients, 257, over a period of 30 years, they did follow-ups. And what they did for those patients, they did disclosing for all of them, and they did meticulous biofilm removal, still in the traditional way, but they really made sure that they removed all the, block, all the biofilm. And what they found was no more caries, no more attachment lost. So what does this tell us? They did something right. The first thing was to disclose all the patients. Now I must say, I, at university, we all use disclosing agents. We still use the food coloring. And um, when I started in private practice, it wasn't really one of the things that we used. It took up a lot of time and it was super messy. Um, but now I've been using it now again for about five years. And I cannot imagine working without plaque disclosing. Why? Mainly for two reasons. The one reason is there's a huge benefit and disclosed biofilm when it comes to patient education and motivation. I always tell the little story that I, I've been married, then I was married for like 10 years already, and my husband's a chartered accountant, so he's a, he's a pretty clever man. And, um, you know, I've tried to up his dental IQ after the, the last few years and so on. You know, the chartered accountants don't know much about oral hygiene and so on. So when I got the new airflow machine and I, I got him in as a patient, after the this closing, he said to me, oh my word, now I can also see what you're talking about and I actually understand. And I thought to myself, oh my God, well, what have you been doing all of these years? Your poor patients, most of them probably did not have a clue what you're talking about. So highlighting this, the biofilm makes it so much easier. Patients can see where they're leaving plaque. So when you do your instructions, your maybe demonstrating interdental brush, they can see the purple and the pink that's stuck on the brush and the areas that's become clean on the tooth. And the other reason is for yourself as clinician. If you disclose all the biofilm, you can check and see so easily if you've maybe left something behind. So I normally now when I'm done, just go with a dental mirror and check. Uh, and very often I've, I've seen there's a few places that I've probably definitely neglected over the years that I uh, tend to leave biofilm, distal of a few teeth, maybe distal of the sevens or the eights and so on. So this will help you to make sure that you remove all the biofilm on every patient. There are different options when it comes to plaque disclosing. You get gels, you get, uh, I love the two-tone fluids. They show the older and the new plaque off, new plaque, um, younger than about three, four days, that shows off as pink. And then the purple plaque is older than four days. And patients are really very shocked when you tell them that and they can actually see it and you can show them when you take it off, it's like very thick. So your options is the gel. Um, it's very nice, you get a, a, a three-tone one as well that I've got on the slide there. And then you get the two tones, the one on the right-hand side, the biofilm discloser, um, guided biofilm therapy one, is pre-soaked little pellets, and it's almost like a little sponge. So it's really very nice when you disclose um, uh, orthodontic appliances, it doesn't get hooked on it. It's really very nice. And then you get the little tablets as well. I personally, I don't like them very much. I prefer for... Uh, professional use home care it's fine but in the chair I prefer a fluid that runs so it goes in between the teeth in all the little uh, areas so you can see where all the plaque is 
So definitely remember the biofilm. Then when we look at our airflow and air polishing. So the hand pieces all worked more or less the same. They don't all look the same, but they work more or less the same. Um, in the middle, you've got an outlet for your air and uh, powder. And on the outside, like I've showed you there, um, the water comes out. So what that does is, and you, oh, you'll also see the little nozzle on the inside is slightly longer than the one on the outside. And what that does is it, it prevents the water and the powder from mixing within the handpiece. And that is one of the things that cause clogging. So these handpieces are absolutely brilliantly designed and they prevent that. So strictly spoken, if you um, have got good protocols at work, you shouldn't get a clogged handpiece. Um, a tip for you guys is that always purge the handpiece before you put it through the sterilizer. Because after you've seen the last patient, maybe, there will some be some powder residue within the handle. And if you take that off the handpiece and you go and put it through the sterilizer, there will be powder left. And that powder will harden. And then when you want to start using your handpiece the next morning, it will be clogged. So always purge and clean your handpiece out before you put it through the sterilizer in between your patients, um, then you shouldn't have a problem with that. Or even if it's just not in use, if it uh, is going to lie for, a, for quite a while. So I purge and clean uh, my handpiece after, after every single patient, and then you won't really have a problem with that. So the star of our show today is our powders. Um, there is quite a few on the market. And I really want to emphasize today, please get to know these powders, the pros, the cons, the indications, contraindications. It's absolutely essential. I will go through quite a bit of it today. We won't have time for everything, but I'll try and cover uh, the basics for you. You get your powders that's got bigger particles, smaller particles, and your different types of powders. So if we look at a powder, what will make a good powder? It needs to be safe. In other words, you will have to be able to use it safely on enamel. And there, there are uh, powders that is safe on dentine and restorations, um, orthodontic appliances, even soft tissue. So it needs to be safe. It also needs to be safe for the patient. So if they digest some of it, it needs to be safe. It needs to be functional. It needs to do a job. It, need, yeah, it, it needs to work easily, be effective, and it needs to be comfortable. Absolutely for the patient as well. As I said, some of these parts you have to be very careful because it can um, cause a lot of discomfort, especially if used incorrectly. So here is a slide of the different, not all of them, but some of the powders on the market, just to give you an idea of particle size. Now, if I start off at the bottom left, you'll see there's a sodium bicarbonate powder, which is 65 microns. Um, this powder is very effective for removing stains of enamel, but for instance, it's not safe to use towards the soft tissue. And so the 40 micron bicarb powder as well. EMS has done research and why they've brought out the classic comfort powder is that they've actually realized that these two powders are basically both the same when it comes to the effectiveness of them, even though the one has got smaller particle size. The reason for that is you've got a few extra particles hitting the two surface. Um, so preferably in my machine, I only use the 40 microns because it's more comfortable for the patient, but just as effective. 
And then on the right hand side of the screen, you've got your glycine and your erythritol. That's a 25 and a 14 micron. These two powders are safe to use on soft tissue and subgingival belly. And they, they're very soft powders as well. We'll get, we'll get to that as well in the next slide. So here you'll see, if you look at Mohs hardness scale, enamel is about four to five, our dentine is three to four, and our cementum is about two to four. So when we go and look at our popular powders on the market, our erythritol powder that I've just shown you now, the one in the purple and white bottle, which is 14 microns, on more hardness scale, it's two. So that is a very soft and gentle powder. And that's the reason that it is actually safe to use not only on dentine and cementum, but on soft tissue as well. With that powder, you can do a full mouth soft tissue cleaning. You can clean the palate, you can clean the tongue, you can really clean the whole inside of the mouth. Our glycine powder is also, even though the particle size is slightly bigger, it is still a very soft powder. But then if we move up to our bicarbs, you'll see they're also still quite soft, but we have to keep in mind the bigger particle size. Remember, if you, I always say when we do the courses, if you take a rock and you throw one big rock, it will make quite a dent. But if you take that same rock and you break it up into smaller pieces, if you put the impacts of that together, you should get the same result, but the impact at a time won't be as great. In other words, it will be just as effective, but a lot more gentle on the two surface. Then um, if you go to our aluminium trihydroxide and so on, you'll see we move up to about 3.5 to, to 4. And our bioactive glass, which is our salt powder, is about 4.8 to 6. And then I know there's a few of us that very often still use pumice. Please don't do that. It is extremely hard. I think it's about uh, 67 or 7 to 8 on the more hardness scale. And the particles is very uneven and very rough and very sharp. So always avoid um, polishing patient's teeth with um, pumice, unless you maybe want to clean a fissure or something like that before a fissure sealant. So our particle size, um, I've put this one as in as well, just to give you an idea, if you look at the right-hand side of how big change there is in the particle sizes. The little green particle there is 25 microns, which is our glycine powder. And the plus powder, which is the erythritol, is 14. So it's even smaller than that one. When you move up to the 73 microns, you'll see that is quite a big particle. Other thing that we need to consider is the weight and the shape of the particles. Uh, a, par a powder that's a little bit heavier will give you a better result, but then you have to make sure that the particle itself is not too big because that will actually cause damage to the two surface. And then the shape, of course, as well. Now, a lot of these particle um, powders are a little bit more expensive than the other ones. And one of the reasons is the shape of it. So your better powders, they, the edges of the powders are actually polished which makes them a lot more smoother and less abrasive and safer. So this chart you'll be able to find on the internet. I absolutely love it. And you'll see um, on the left-hand side, I've included the Perio, um, by the glycine powders. And on the right-hand side, I've included the other more like coarser powders. So the plus powder goes with the two here on uh, the left-hand side. Um, 
And then the other part is goes with the classic airflow powder on the right. So the same will go more or less for those powders if you want to put them into two groups. So I want to skip to there to the middle part. If you look at the teeth, um, the little green marks is for the areas that it's safe to use on and the red sign is of course where it's not safe to use on. So when you look at teeth, it is efficient on stains and early calculus, um, all of them, except really for the pyroglycine. And the reason for that, it's the bigger particle than the plus, um, but it's a, the glycine is a, a kind of a lighter, a lighter particle, so it won't be so effective. It's safe, all of them, to use on enamel. If you've got a patient with white lesions, it's only really safe to use your plus powder and your glycine powders, your fine glycine powders, which is like the period one here also. And then your pits and fissures, also just the plus, be careful for the other ones, then team the same story. Um, when we go to soft tissue, you'll see the plus is safe, but the other powders are not safe to use on any soft tissue or even towards the soft tissue. Your tongue palette, composites, um, glass isomers, and then around implants as well. So I always tell if in doubt, use your softer, more gentle powders, which is your plus and your perio powders, your glycine and your resveratrol powder. Your other powders is only really safe to use on healthy enamel, nothing else. So four tips for successful air polishing or our airflow treatment. First, work at an angle and we'll go through these. Work your working distance is extremely important. Always keep the hand piece moving, never hold it still on one um, area and use lots and lots of water. So if we look at the working angle, we always try to work at about 45 degrees. Now there are basically two reasons for that. First one is, and you'll see there right in the middle, if you work at a 90 degree angle, the water in your handpiece will not be able to wash away the powder. So the powder will be left on the two surface and new powder exiting the nozzle will actually hit the powder residue that's still lying on the two surface. So you won't get effective cleaning. Where if you angle um, it at a 45 degrees, the powder will get washed away. And if you then get new powder coming out from the handpiece, it will hit the two surface. So you'll be a lot more effective at that angle. The other reason is for your aerosol control. If you work at an angle, you know where the powder and water is going to end up so you can hold the suction in that area but the angle is absolutely critical. The next tip is the distance. Now, normally when we use a handpiece, a polishing handpiece, if we can't get something off, what do we do? We kind of, we press a little bit harder. But with these hand pieces, it's actually the other way around. So it takes a bit of getting used to and just wrapping your mind around that. What you should do is hold the handpiece two to five millimeter away from the two surface. Why? First of all, you will get a much larger working area. As the powder exits the handpiece, um, it spreads out in like a V shape. So if you hold the handpiece at that about five millimeters from the tooth, you will get a much larger working area. You will be able to clean a bigger part of the tooth. If you hold it too close, you can have a teeny tiny little working area. And on the previous uh, video I showed you where I said that their technique is not spot on, you would have seen that 
um, the area that they were cleaning were actually very small. If they just pulled the handpiece a little bit further back, they would have gotten a much better, faster result. The other interesting thing is that the part is, they're almost under pressure in the handpiece. And as soon as they exit, they speed up. And it takes those powder particles about two millimeters to get to the optimum speed. On the right hand, you'll see that little diagram there, and it will show you between two and five millimeters, those little particles are at optimal speed, which will influence your um, efficiency. So larger working area, the particles will be at a good high optimal speed and that will affect your effectiveness. But I must say this, this is something when we do the hands-on course, I, this is something to get used to. So always keep the hand piece moving, never ever hold it still. Here's a short little video. This is actually one of my own patients. She loves her coffee and her red wine. So you'll see I like to start off at the edges of the tooth and then work my way up to the incisal edge and just keep on moving. You'll see the angle and I will work towards the suction and this will help with uh, um, controlling the aerosol. So here's also some research that has been done um, with some very nice pics here to show you. Um, so on, just see if I can get this out of my way. There we go. The top slide is actually composite. Um, the top um, left-hand side is our sodium bicarbonate. Um, which you can see will cause damage to our composites. Uh, and then the other part is as well, some of them quite significantly, but not our glycine powder. That is 100% safe. But please remember that when they do this research, they've got a handpiece that they hold at a certain distance and they literally hold it on one area for five seconds. Then the enamel here at the bottom, you'll see that the bicarb, the finer bicarb is 100% safe. The aluminum trihydroxide, you've got to be careful for, but um, the glycine powder again is 100% safe. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just going to go out and in again. Seems like we're stuck on this one slide. Sorry about that. Hi, Ms. Hobler. Um, perhaps yes. just try to to um, stop sharing and then restart sharing again. And yeah, I'm going to do that. Thank you. Sorry. Let's try that again. There we go. We're back into action. So on the left hand side is an airflow handpiece that they've actually used a, a different a different brand in. And can you see the damage? This is very, very shocking. So just imagine what this can do to your patient's teeth. So be very careful. Then the high water setting. There are basically two reasons, as we already said. It will help 
to reduce your aerosol. The reason for that is in the previous slides, I showed you that the water exits on the outer side of the handpiece. So if your water setting is nice and high, you've got quite a bit of water coming out, it will help to keep the, the powder so that it does not go everywhere. So a high water setting is extremely important to reduce your aerosol. The other reason is to help to wash the powder away from the two surface. Um, it's absolutely essential. If your water level is not too low, too low, you're going to have a lot of residue stuck on the teeth. And then, as I explained previously, the new particles exiting the handpiece is actually going to hit the powder residue that's still on the tooth surface. So, airflow at its best. There are so many things that we can do with airflow. Supra gingival cleaning, we can do our minimal invasive treatments subgingivally. So with a normal airflow handpiece and our plus powder or a period powder, you are able to clean subgingivally up to four millimeters. So in a patient with a healthy mouth um, with no uh, periodontal problems, the plus powder and that handpiece will absolutely be wonderful. On exposed dentine, you can clean your restoration edges with that around orthodontic appliances, around implants. Again, you'll be able to reach about four millimeters. Your pits and fissures interdentally. I always explain, you know, when you take your car and to have it washed, isn't it better to have it sprayed down with a high pressure hose than to wash it down with a sponge? So this is almost the same. It's just so much more effective getting into all those difficult to reach areas. Airflow makes life uh, very easy. It's safe to use on primary teeth, tongue, palate, all the soft tissue. Um, you can use it before you do composite uh, restorations and before teeth whitening as well. So there's really uh, a lot that we can do with this. Sorry, it seems like we have to go through this again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, while Donna sorts out the screen, please remember that you can type your questions in the Q&A section at the top of the screen, and we'll answer your questions at the end of the webinar. Okay. So, subgingival cleaning. As I mentioned, our airflow handpiece, we are able to reach up to four millimeters subgingivally. Our patients with periodontal issues, you can use a handpiece like this. It's called a PeroFlow. You get other similar ones. The little nozzle is actually marked in millimeters, so you know exactly how deep to put it into the pocket. And you can use your plus or your Pero powder, and you use a small back and forth vertical movement, and it will take you five to 15 seconds to clean a pocket. Um, it's absolutely amazing, especially for those patients that's got pockets that you've been that you've cleaned out and they come back, they haven't healed completely yet, and you want to clean that from biofilm 100%. It's effective, it's safe, it's comfortable for the patient. You don't need to anesthetize. Um, it really works a charm. So let, let's look at options for yourself. So uh, I know these days, you know, times are tough and um, some of the practice, we're not always as busy as we would like to be. Um, and you might say, listen, Dana, I don't have, I would like to use airflow or air polishing, but I literally just don't have the budget for it now. What are my options? Go and look at different polishing cups and polishing brushes. They are really very, very nice ones out there on the market. Maybe up for a polishing cup that's not so hard, a softer one. 
um, when I was still using uh, polishing cups, I know a lot of them come in different, like a color range. And I used to use the very soft ones. They are more bendable and they, they get better in difficult areas. And then you also get lovely little brushes that you can use for your fissures and difficult to reach areas, maybe around orthodontic brackets. And then go and have a look at your polishing paste. Remember the coarser ones are not always the best ones to use. So go and have, a, maybe look, do a little bit of research on your polishing paste and maybe try well, a new polishing cap. So I want to start using airflow and air polishing, but I'm really on a small budget. So what are my options? I would say maybe, maybe start with buying a handy device. These you can put on your unit. Try to buy a good quality one if you can. Um, if you look at the one from EMS, that's a, a plus handy. In other words, it, it's designed to um, use with the smaller particle powders. You also get two hand pieces with it. You get your normal airflow, and then you get that air piece, uh, hand piece I just mentioned that you can clean sub gingerly with as well. So you could always start off by just buying a basic model and then later on add maybe your sub gingival um, little hand piece and so on. And I always feel that these will never be a waste. Even if you maybe later upgrade to something else, these will always be in the practice and there will always be somebody that would like to use them. So um, it won't be a waste of your money. Maybe you have a device. Um, then I would say go and have a look at the different powders that are on the market. Maybe you can change to something that's maybe a slightly smaller particle or that is not as hard. Please just make sure that um, it's safe to use on the model that you have and that you won't damage it. Um, you also can't use a model that's designed for much larger, larger particles, maybe like a 65 micron, and now go and try and use 40 micron powder on that. There's just too much powder that's going to come out through the handpiece. So just make 100% sure that it's safe for your machine and that you won't damage it. But go and have a look. Maybe you can just use um, something that's slightly smaller and slightly softer that will be safer for the patient, safer for the teeth, and you can maybe do a bit more with that. Maybe you would want to buy a unit. There are quite a few out there on the market. Contact your reps and make sure that you um, get all the information that you need because these things are quite expensive but life-changing, expensive, but life-changing. I love mine, I wouldn't be able to practice without it. Some of the units you get these days on the market, they're cordless, which I love because there's so many pedals these days lying around and little cords and things. They are cordless, um, they can heat up the water. Um, some of them you can even change like powder chambers. So you can use, two different powders on the same machine where we, you've got the little handy devices, it's not always possible. And then for you that's already using the EMS and the airflow, um, the plus powder, which is our popular powder that we do everything with, comes now in new packaging. So uh, it's an aluminum recyclable bottle. Uh, you can use it afterwards for a water bottle or whatever. So more or less about four of the smaller containers uh, powder will be the same equivalent to one of those. And then um, the classic powder comfort one is a 40 micron bicarb. And we're now stocking the 65 micron powder as well, which is slightly bigger, bigger powder particle. So if there's maybe three points that I want you to take home with you today is disclose your patients. That is the easiest change to make. And I promise you, it will be life changing for you and your patients. And it is super easy to use. 
Meticulous um, biofilm removal is absolutely key. Um, try your best, and that's where the disclosing comes in as well. It's like the research said, those results they got on that 257 patients was because they did proper, proper biofilm removal. And make it work for you. Um, I mean, we're not on the, all in the same boat. We don't have the same practices we all work for different fees and things like that but you have to keep in mind call your rep ask questions and get something that will work for you in your practice and I really love this saying is success is peace of mind and knowing you have done your best so yes thank you very much um, it was lovely and uh, I hope we've got a few questions Okay, thank you so much, Jonna. Um, yes, we do have a few questions. I'm just going to head over to the Q&A session now. Okay, so the first question is from an anonymous attendee. Would you say that the airflow procedure takes precedence over root planing? The aim of both procedures is to remove the biofilm, except that for root planing, you should use a sharp curette to remove a few microns of healthy cementum first and then healthy dentine on subsequent visits. Okay, so airflow therapy and air polishing is not for removing calculus. It is only to remove biofilm, stains, and maybe very young, newly formed calculus. So if, if you have a patient that you need to do root planing with, you still need to do your root planing. But when they come in for those follow-up appointments, you can use your airflow to clean any of those pockets out again, because by then you won't have new tartar tar that's formed, but you might have a new biofilm in those pockets. And then airflow is absolutely ideal to clean those out. So it's very important when we do, um, and I would love you guys to just go and read up on it. It's called Guided Biofilm Therapy. And it's something that's been designed by the Swiss Dental Academy, and it really switches stuff around. So how I work now is instead of, instead of scaling first, I actually remove the biofilm first, and then I do the scaling. Uh, it's a totally new way of thinking and doing. Um, it's absolutely amazing. So I would really advise you, there's a lot of research on it. There's a lot of info on it. You can go and register on the Swiss Dental Academy site and they will send you information or not send, but you can go and read the, all the information on there. Thank you, Devna. Um, we've got another question from an anonymous, we've got a lot of anonymous attendees tonight. Oh, my word, um, I the next, why. Is, <laughs> the next one is, is there an additional charge for the use of the airflow procedure or is this inclusive in the code 8159? And do medical aids pay for this procedure? No. So there's no special um, fee or code for air polishing. Air polishing will, will replace um, your normal polishing. Remember these powders. And again, we don't have enough time today to really go into everything. But if you use one of your, your coarser powders, so your bicarb, your 40 microns and up, I would say, you have to repolish afterwards with a smaller micron to give that super smooth feeling to the patient. Uh, and that totally eliminates our normal abrasive, ineffective <laughs> polishing. <laughs> so no, there's no special code for it. Um, you will still charge your 8159. All right, thank you. Um, another anonymous attendee, um, I think this was covered in your lecture. Do you think the airflow procedure is a must before tooth whitening or selection of shades for anterior teeth makeover? Yeah, look, it depends on if you've got time to do the airflow before, and I would definitely say yes. The reason why I like to do a cleaning before whitening is um, those extra six stems, especially the, the lingual ones, does not come off with tooth whitening because it's on the outside of the tooth. 
So then you do whitening for the patient. Say, oh, my word, I've still got stains here left at the back. So I prefer to remove all the X from six stains first, and that's airflow is ideal for, and then do my, do my whitening. All right. Um, another anonymous attendee. Um, is gingival bleeding to be expected with each procedure? No. No. No, it's not. So... Yeah. If a patient has got gingivitis or PRO, there will be bleeding. But just like when you'll do a scaling on a patient with gingivitis, there will be bleeding. There's inflammation. There's blood. But airflow will not cause more bleeding. It will actually cause less bleeding. Personally, in my practice, I do the, the whitening first. Uh, ach, the whitening first. I do the disclosing first. I use a, a little Optra gate and then I um, disclose and then I first start off with my airflow. So I remove all the biofilm. And whenever I use the airflow subgingivally and there's a little bit of bleeding, I know there is sub subgingival tartar. So it's one of the little things that I know I must go and have a, have a look when I'm done here. I know I will probably find something there. Um, yeah, I can attest to this because I used the airflow last week on a few of my patients and it all depends on the angulation of your handpiece as well. So you need to be very careful as Dona did mention, don't put it too close to the tooth because most people think putting it close to the tooth is going to remove the stains more. Actually, the Listen, you have, to, you have to get proper training to mm. get the most out of a unit or a handpiece like that. So that's an ask your reps. They will gladly assist you. We host on we host hands-on courses um, that you can come and attend, and we will help you to get the, the most out of that, and so that your can your technique is one hundred percent correct, not just for you but for your patients as well for safety. All right, we've got another question. Um, are all the products that you alluded to available in South Africa? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. And company, do you know the company that they can contact or? So it depends on which powders they want. Um, so EMS is through Ivodent and they do the erythritol powder, um, the Find the 14 one, they do some of the bicarb powders. So you can maybe start off there, but I mean, you, I know um, Dental Warehouse has got the Cavitron with the Profijet and they've got powders. So um, Mulders, I think, has also got, yeah. You just have to go and do your research, contact the reps, and then make a decision, I think, based on that. Ask for demos. It's really very important. Okay, thank you. Another question, can you induce cavitation with the use of the airflow procedures in areas with a white spot lesion? Look, it, it won't cause as much damage as polishing paste, that I can tell you. The plus powder will be 100% safe. Remember that little chart I showed, everything is on there. If you take a quite a coarse bicarb powder and you hold it still on that lesion, lesion for quite a while, you probably might cause some damage, but not more, I would say, than normal polishing paste with wool. Okay. Um, and then another question. Can you clean fissures prior to the fissure sealants using the airflow? Yes, you can. It's ideal for that. Much more effective the than the little uh, brushes will be. Yeah. And the contraindications for airflow as well. So it depends on what powder you are using. If you're using, like, for instance, the plus powder, the erythritol 14 micron powder, um, the only really contraindication you'll have is maybe a patient that's allergic to chlorhexidine because there's chlorhexidine in the powder to keep it sterile for you to be able to use it subgingivally. But if you go over to the other powders, then you need to be careful. Then you can't go onto soft tissue. You can't work towards soft tissue. You can't go on to like open, open necks or uh, restorative materials. 
So it really depends on what powder you use. And as I said, if you want to play it safe and you're new to uh, airflow, always start off with your plus powder because you can't go wrong. Uh, you can, you know, your technique does not even be, need to be spot on. You will be fine, you know. Um, but when you use the coarser powders, you really have to be very careful. Okay. Um, okay I'm just going to go through a few more questions quickly before time runs out. And um, the next one is this. Um, you had said that you clean the fissure out with the pumice. What are particles or what is the particle size of pumice? Um, as you had said that pumice is abrasive. Can you clarify? Yeah, so pumice, um, if you just want to clean a little fissure out before a sealant, I would say it's fine. But pumice is not for um, polishing teeth. It's very abrasive. It's very hard. And the particles are much bigger than any of the powders that's out there on the market. So uh, it's definitely it's definitely not safe. I would never polish a patient's teeth with pumice. It's definitely not recommended, no. There are much better things out there to use than pumice. <laughs> that's um, another one quickly, um, anonymous attendee. How easy is it to use different powders for the same patient using the EMS? Yes. It's very easy. Uh, personally, like with the plus powder, I use on 100% of my patients, all of them. And then the, the comfort powder, uh, the bicarb, finer bicarb powder, I probably use on... 10 to 15% of my patients. That's only really patients that's got very hard stains. Um, sometimes you get like a little, I would say it's a wild card, a patient with really a, a lot of plaque and a lot of staining. <laughs> we all know those. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then I go in there with the bicarb the bike powder just to remove the bulk of it to save me a bit of time. But as I said, again, if you started off with the coarser ones, you have to finish off with a plus powder to get that two surface 100% smooth. Perfect. Um, we've got a question from Rudy Swart. Uh, won't an air polishing procedure be contraindicated in patients with gingivitis due to the possibility of bacteremia? No. No, absolutely not. If you use the plus powder, it will be 100% safe. That I can absolutely guarantee you. When should you not use um, even the plus powder? So if you've got a, it's safe to use supra gingivity, but if you've got a patient with a pocket that you've just done root, root planing on, in other words, there's soft tissue damage um, and there's a lot of bleeding, then you will not put um, air pressure in under that um, gingiva into the pocket, especially not that little perio handpiece I showed you with a little nozzle, then you will not use that. You will also not insert and use it in a pocket that there's pus coming out. That is not safe. So. Then you use your peas on. Remember, again, I think one day we should actually do something on our peas on scalers the different types we get, and actually what is the correct technique? Because it's uh, surprising. I don't even know all of that. Um, the way the tip we use, what side you must use of it. It's always best to use a ultrasonic scalar sub gingivally. It leaves a much better, smoother surface than a hand instrument will ever leave. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Norman Clement, but I think you've just um, touched on that answer. Um, are there any systemic contraindications in which you should not use airflow or teeth whitening or teeth whitening process? Systemic disease? Oh. Yes, systemic contraindications. Oh, so um, I've never had a patient that I could not use it on. Um, the only really contraindication, as I said, is allergies. So some of the powders got flavorants in as well that you've got to be careful for. 
Um, and then really a patient with a severe asthma. Um, but, you know, patients that come into, uh, they're not going to come for oral hygiene appointment. So the patients have just got normal asthma and it's, that should be absolutely fine. Okay. Um, and then are there any health issues with patients or staff in heading the powder over long periods of use? We hope you're wearing a mask, number one. Oh, and a shield and all of that. No, yeah. that's why I said, remember when I said that the, the um, what makes a good powder, one of the things was it needs to be safe. So these powder particles, um, the good quality ones, are covered in silica, and it actually prevents um, the powder to it um, can't dissolve in water. Um, so it's it makes it the powder don't clog as well in the bottle, but if you inhale it, or um, it's one hundred percent safe. Um, there's been a lot of research done and studies. And again, I said, go on to SDA, their website. All the information is on there. Myself have been using the airflow um, now for quite a few years. And I'm still fine. <laughs> I hope I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. No, I think you're still fine. Um, I think Tanya Prinsler's... Um, Question was also answered. I know water reduces the powder becoming an aerosol and all over the place, but are there any medical conditions that are to be considered such as asthma or other lung diseases of inhalation might occur? No, it's really just patients that's got severe asthma. Um, personally, I've never had a problem with one of my patients. Okay. And lastly, or the last question I've got, second last question. What about a pacemaker? Can you, is it safe to use? If a yeah, patient has a yeah it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And Norman Clement, are any of these products known for being carcinogenic? No. Nope. Remember like the erythritol powder. Uh, erythritol is a, um, like a sugar substitute, it's almost like xylitol, and it comes in a, it's a natural product. Same with bicarbs, a part of salt. So especially the EMS powders, they're all, I'm saying, natural. Okay. All right. And then I think we've answered all 400 questions. I'm kidding. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. A reminder to please um, complete the evaluation at the end of the webinar. And also remember to register for the SADA conference from the 27th to the 29th of August. And we'll see you there. I'll be there, but virtually. Please don't go to any venue because you won't find us there. We will be on your screen. All right. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of fresh breath day. I hope you brushed your teeth or you're about to brush your teeth and you have also told your patients as well like what to do and how to look after themselves. It was a pleasure hosting you tonight. Thank you, Dervna Hola. Thank you, Sada and Ohasa. And we'll see you soon.